This looks like an old abandoned warehouse, but when you walk through this secret entrance, it's actually the coolest clothing and shoe store. After you walk in, they have this cute little market with a few different shops. My personal favorite is this adorable, colorful convenience store. So you can actually buy this stuff too. A pink skull candle. I'm gonna consider this little convenience store the front, and that's where I'm going to make my first purchase. I ended up picking out this cute can of food that is actually a candle. Oh, I like it, it smells like fall. But there is so much more in this place. Next door to the little convenience store is this little t-shirt booth where they have some fun bodega merch. And then just past that is another little section that just sells kid shoes. And there's some really fun styles in here. Those are crazy. Okay, now we're going back out to the big area on the left of the entrance. And we've got this huge shoe section with all kinds of brands like Nike, Adidas, and- This is a croc. I've literally never seen this croc in my life. Turns out these are a limited edition croc that is actually pretty hard to find. So of course I had to get them and I have been wearing these crocs every day since. <laughs> Up these stairs, just above the cute little market area, we are heading to level two. There's some pretty unique products up here and I love this little like school section, but there's still more. If you head up this next set of stairs to the third level, there is a ton of clothes, mostly men's streetwear. So I ended up getting the crocs as well as this cute bodega t-shirt from the back hidden parts of the store. And then of course the candle from the front. Well, that was a 10 out of 10 experience. I got everything I wanted, needed, exceeded my expectations. I can't believe there's three levels of store in here and you really would never guess. This is so cool. Today we are visiting eight more secret stores across America. All of these look like a certain type of shop, but then when you find the hidden door inside, it takes you to the back to a whole other experience. And my challenge is to buy something from the facade front of each store, as well as from the hidden back of each store. Our next hidden store is located just down the street from that last one. And it's in the DTLA market in Los Angeles, California. And it's a really awesome area. It looks like buildings that were previously like abandoned and not really being used, but they transformed this whole place into this cute little shopping center that has coffee shops, fitness centers. And behind me in the middle of it all is this cute little apartment, but it's not actually an apartment. This place is called Apartment 4B. And the entire place is decorated just like an apartment straight out of the 1990s in New York City. The first room that you walk into is the living room and like kitchen area, complete with an actual living room set, a 90s style TV, and then the stacks of VHSs. This is so cool. And then the second room that you walk into is the bedroom. Wow. Is everything in the store for sale? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. There are some really cool vintage tees in this section. <gasps> this is cool. Fendi jacket. When I saw this bedazzled hustler tee, I knew I had to get it. Okay, I'm obsessed with this. And if you keep going, there's one more room in the very back. Oh, wow. <gasps> keeps going into this boutique looking area. Okay, so since the challenge is to buy something inside and outside, I almost feel like we need to buy something from each room in here. <laughs> I ended up getting this crew neck sweatshirt. It's actually an upcycled design. I love stuff like this. Cool. First time in here, right? Yeah, this is yeah. awesome. Is it your store? Yeah, me and my wife. Cool, I love it. This is actually the owner of the store and he was so nice. Him and his wife actually designed all of these t-shirts that are on this rack in the front of the store. So I had to get one of those as well. My favorite part of the store is probably when I asked for a different size of a t-shirt, he went over to the fridge and that's where they keep all of the extra stock. This was such a cool place. So we ended up with a couple t-shirts from the front apartment section. And then of course the crew neck from the back hidden section. Now we are getting on an airplane and headed across the country to New York City, home of the speakeasies. Speakeasies emerged in New York City in the 1920s and 30s during the prohibition era. They were basically hidden bars where people could illegally purchase and consume alcohol. Even when prohibition ended in the 1930s, speakeasy influence has still continued to impact the city's bar culture and just nightlife culture in general. And that's why most of our hidden secret stores are located in New York City. Also, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already because I'm giving away all of these iPhones and two Samsung Galaxies to subscribers when we hit 5 million subscribers and we are getting so close. And you watching on TV, yes you. All you have to do is swipe up on your remote, click over to my cute little face here, and then hit subscribe. This storefront is called Camp, and it looks like a regular unsuspecting gift shop that honestly has a pretty great selection of products. This store is so cute. They have jelly cats. Ah! 
Oh my gosh, the pizza. <laughs> I decided to go with the pizza jelly cat. And then it was time to head to the back. You enter through this candy wall, which when you knock on it, it swings open to reveal Trolls Land. <laughs> like Trolls. The DreamWorks movie. And this place is elaborate. There's a bunch of like little fun rooms off to the side, including the Trolls Salon, which we will be visiting in a little bit. But this giant slide in the middle of the room really caught my eye. So I asked one of the employees, do you think I can fit down the slide? It, it, it's scary and it is terrifying, <laughs> I won't lie. As long as you uh, are, are brave enough to do it. Okay, here I go. Oh, it's really little. Ah. <laughs> easy way to get into this. It is pitch black in this thing and you don't slide very easy and the corners are tight. So it was in fact terrifying. Ah! <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, it's scary. <laughs> After that thrilling experience, I decided it was time to make our purchase in the hidden back of the store. And the only purchase that I could find information online in this place is getting the Trolls Glow Up Makeover. <laughs> so you can pick between these three looks. And of course I went with the pink one. You get the makeup, the gems on your face, and the wig, all for a small fee of $38. It seems like kind of a lot, but the only other people I saw getting this done were like five years old. I'm too old for this. But then, right after I got my makeover, the employees told us that Poppy herself was out taking photos for like 10 minutes, so I ran over, because how could I not get a photo with Poppy? She's literally me, literally twins. I have a confession, I've never actually seen the movie Trolls. <laughs> but after getting my photo with Poppy, we continued continued our way into the next couple rooms. And at this point I realized I was the oldest person here by about 20 years. So I felt like it was time to go. <laughs> and then on our way out, I discovered I didn't actually need to buy the makeover because back here there's an entire Trolls gift shop. So I could have just got a bracelet or something instead. Well, that was an experience. Also, all of the little kids have been staring at me the whole time because I think that they think I work here. <laughs> Not five seconds after filming this clip, this little mom came up to me with her daughter and she was like, can my daughter get a picture with the real life Poppy? <laughs> <laughs> so maybe making this little girl's day, taking this photo made the entire mortifying experience worth it. And we succeeded in our front purchase and in our back purchase. So it's time to head to our next secret store, which is located in the Upper East Side of New York City. Here's our little ice cream shop. Although it's not actually an ice cream shop. I do hope that they sell ice cream as well too though. But there is a secret wall in the shop and you have to give them like a secret passcode to enter. And behind the wall is a whole other experience. Inside is pretty small. There's just like the little ice cream cream display with like a few flavors. There's some cool artwork and stuff on the walls. Can I get ice cream? We're here to see the storage room. The storage room? Okay. <laughs> and after you say that super secret phrase, the employee walks you over to this wall of ice cream containers and tells you there's a hidden button somewhere that you need to find. It's kind of a tricky prompt because you'd assume that it's like in one of the ice cream containers or something, but it's actually off to the side on this wall in this little teeny tiny cupboard. So you open that, push the button, the wall swings open and we're in. You walk into the dark past these cute like neon signs and stuff and you enter this super cool bar area. You can order food, you can order drinks. It's a pretty cool little place. Turns out you have to order two drinks, <laughs> like two adult beverages. I don't drink those, so this was awkward. I had to order them anyway. I kind of wanted to see them anyway though, especially these drinks that come with ice cream on them. So we got this one and they literally just took a whole ice cream cone and plopped it right on top, which I've never seen that before. And then this one's really cute in this cute little glass. We also got this unicorn ice cream sundae that you can take the unicorn cup home with you. It wasn't until later that I realized I could have ordered an $8 non-alcoholic beverage in a sippy cup. I'm devastated because this is hilarious and I feel like every bar should do that. I felt like everything here was a bit overpriced and pretty mid if I'm being honest. So it's time to go. Now we got to go back to the front to see if we can like actually order an ice cream. Turns out you can. It was a cute experience experience, but I'd say all of the treats and drinks were just okay for the price. By the way, let me know in the comments if you have any speakeasy hidden type places in your town or a town that you've visited. Next, we are headed all the way down to Lower Manhattan to Essex Street. We have this lovely little antique store behind me. This location used to be in the early 1900s, MCAT's Fine Furniture, which you can still see the outline of the logo behind the fancy new sign. And if it weren't for this flashy sign, you would have no idea one of New York's most beautiful restaurants is hidden in this place. What we're gonna do 
is we're gonna walk inside and look for a door that looks like an employee's only entrance and behind that door is something way more exciting. So we walked into the antique shop and I'm gonna be honest, the hidden door isn't really that hard to find. It's the only door in the whole place. <laughs> and behind it, the restaurant really is beautiful. Amazing decor, immaculate vibes. I personally love this little skylight that's at the top of the restaurant. We got some fun mocktails and honestly, in my opinion, I thought the food was incredible. The honorable mention goes to these little grilled cheese tomato soup bites that come in a spoon and the mini French dip sandwiches, incredible. The fish I got was also pretty amazing. We ended the meal with the famous Ferris wheel of desserts, which was just okay, but a cute moment. Also, I feel like this would be a pretty easy DIY to make this and have it at home. And then when you have friends over, you just pull out a cute dessert Ferris wheel. I'm gonna do it. Now it's time to go back out to the front antique store to see if we can actually buy some of this stuff. Is everything actually for sale? Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. The guitars on the wall are pretty cool, but this jewelry case in the front really caught my eye, specifically these beautiful diamond tennis bracelets. I really, really like this one, and I was so excited to find out it's not real jewelry. It's just costume jewelry, which means I can afford this bracelet. So this place was a success. We got our meal in the back, and then my cute bracelet from the front. So far, we're crushing this challenge. At this point, we've been in New York for a few days, and I am running out of t-shirts, <laughs> which means a quick trip to the Little Sunshine laundromat. But this isn't just a laundromat. It has a fun, hidden surprise inside, which I'm sure you guessed. <laughs> so I threw my laundry in, got it started, and then I headed to the back of the laundromat because this dryer at the very back of the store Okay, so this experience was kind of a fail, but there is an arcade back here <laughs> and a bar, but it was kind of early in the day when I showed up to do my laundry. So the arcade at the bar wasn't open yet. However, they do have just two random pinball machines that are up at the front of the store. I just love that somebody was doing their laundry one day and they were like waiting for it to get done and thought, you know, this place needs pinball machines. <laughs> and so they opened this place. It is a great way to pass the time. I'm so bad at pinball actually. <laughs> so I feel like maybe we can still consider this a win for a challenge because I did my laundry in the front for six dollars and then I did technically buy a few rounds of pinball even if it wasn't from the machines in the actual back. I don't know maybe we'll have better luck at our next hidden store. Our next secret shop as you can see behind me we have a lovely art gallery and we're on a mission to see if a this art gallery is functional and you can actually buy the art and then of course we're gonna buy something on the secret door inside which I'm really excited about you'll see why once we get in there. This art gallery is really beautiful like if you were just passing by on the street, you'd be like, wow, what a beautiful art gallery. Question for you, is any of this artwork actually for sale? Oh, okay. <laughs> so I looked up this artist, amazing art, by the way. I found like an online art dealer that you could buy these pieces through. And I inquired about one of the prices for one of these paintings and they messaged me back. It is priced at $14,500. So I don't think I'm gonna be purchasing one of these paintings anytime soon. <laughs> but behind this painting in the middle is the cutest little hidden restaurant. It's called Forevo. And it's just like this little bar that seats like 12 people. And then in the very back, there's two other little tables. And this restaurant ended up being full and it was a Tuesday night. So that's a good sign. Drinks are not included in this very expensive per person fee that you pay to get in here. But I added on this tea and it was the best tea I've ever had. And it came in this little mug that's in a sweater. How cute is that? Oh, by the way, before I tell you how expensive this meal is, I should probably preface it by saying it's not just any restaurant. It is a Michelin star 10 course meal. One of the most incredible experiences of my entire life. I'm not going to lie. As a foodie, I was in heaven. My personal favorites are this little fish dish. That's a white fish. And then they cut up some cuttlefish and put it on top. I had to look up what a cuttlefish is. It's this guy. I ate this guy. <laughs> Also, this zucchini one was weirdly delicious. Oh, and we got this cheese with honey flavored ice cream on top of it. That was amazing. And then I also got upsold to pay $35 for this caviar and a cracker. It was not worth $35, to be honest. There were a couple different dessert courses, but the one that really stood out to me was this strawberries one. And it had a little scoop of arugula ice cream on it. Arugula ice cream is surprisingly amazing. <laughs> but my favorite part was honestly the bowl. 
Like, is this not the most stunning bowl you've ever seen? Oh, and then this final little egg thing. It had like all these layers with these little desserts in it. I loved this little ball. It's full of liquid and it pops in your mouth. That was really cool. How do I do that? Obviously all 10 of these plates are pretty tiny and the overall cost per person was $225. So will I be back? I don't know, but it was an awesome hidden experience. Also, apparently this place is constantly changing the art that they have on display and the menu every single season. So it's always a little bit different, which is fun. I think this is our first official fail in this video because we bought the meal in the back, but I don't think I'm ready to purchase a $15,000 painting. <laughs> Unless you count this cute little menu that they sent us home with. Look, here's the art that's in the front and then it opens and it's the menu that we ate. Yeah. No, not really. Next secret store. I'm super excited about our next secret store. This is the superhero supply store. And from what I've seen, it looks really, really cute. They have a whole bunch of superhero supplies that I believe you can actually shop, but there is a secret area hidden somewhere in the store that we're also going to try to find. Look how cute this is though. This little shop is located in Brooklyn on a little quaint street. I do wonder how many people just walk in thinking it's literally just a superhero supply store. <laughs> Let's take a little tour and see if you can guess where the hidden door is as we're walking around. Let's start over here. Okay, up in the front, we've got these cute little shelves with these like formulas and potions and stuff. X-ray vision, telekinesis. These are so cool. Gloom and doom. Invisibility? Wait, can I buy this? This is actually so cool. <laughs> you can make instant snow. <laughs> Some spy glasses, pretty cool stuff. And then down here, you can build your very own superhero outfit. We've got gloves, cute little belts, instant muscles. And then we have this cute little cape testing area which when we flip this switch, these fans turn on and it simulates if you're flying. How cute is that? Have you guessed where the secret door is yet? It's right here. <laughs> and just like that, behind the bookcase opens up this huge area with a ton of desks, a little mini library, a reading area. There's even a mind reading machine back here. This area is the Youth Writing Center. This is a nonprofit learning center for ages six to 18 years old. And here they can participate in free creative writing programs and come to get tutoring and homework help. All for free. This is really special. These are actually books that were written by the students that write here, which is really, really cool. And of course I had to get a book and this particular one is so cute because it's all of the students favorite places to see and things to do and food to eat in New York. I love this. Writing is specifically a skill that is really special to me because of the impact that it's had on my life. I literally wouldn't be here making YouTube videos if it wasn't for my love of storytelling that came from my amazing teachers and great after school programs like this. So for that reason, I want to do something extra special for this place and the kids. Okay, so we're going to buy the and then I also wanted to be a sponsor. This was so amazing. Say hi! hi! Challenge complete. We made the donation in the back. Sciency experiment stuff from the superhero front. And I decided to get instant blizzard. You're supposed to be able to put half this powder with three ounces of water. It will grow instantly into fake snow. It's supposed to even be cold. Wow. Okay, it's a little bit squishier than regular snow. It is kind of cold though. That's so fun. <laughs> and I got <laughs> bubbles of steel. These are supposed to be bubbles that you blow and they're really durable and don't pop. There's a bunch of colors, but I got the pink one. That didn't seem very indestructible to me. <gasps> okay, they're low key pretty durable. Okay, they're pretty fun. Behind me is the little shop, which from the outside looks like this cute little cafe convenience store. This is probably one of the most impressive hidden shops that we're visiting because the outside is very convincing. I'm gonna be honest, I don't even know how to get into the back, so it's gonna be an adventure going in, but it looks like a cute little store. I'm excited to actually shop the front of it. This little store looks like a movie set. And then when you walk in, it does look just like a regular convenience store. I actually saw a few people come in, get a few items and then check out and leave like you would a regular convenience store. So the lady at the front told us to pick out all of the snacks that we want and pay for them before she takes us back. So I ran around the store, I picked out some treats, some of these unreal candies and chips. We purchased it all from her at the front counter, but then she didn't give it to us. She just told us to go to the back, which after walking around, I can only assume means this little hidden white door in the very back corner, very sneaky. So we headed back there and behind this door is the cutest 
coolest little cocktail bar I have ever seen. It's beautiful. It's decorated in all of this like vintage looking furniture. So we sat down, ordered a couple drinks. The mocktails were all pretty good here. I especially loved this rosemary limeade. And I was surprised when they delivered us all of the snacks that we ordered at the front, but they were on these cute little vintage trays and plates. Definitely my favorite out of the hidden like bar experiences that we've done. I could have spent hours in here. 11 out of 10 recommend. So we got our drinks from the back and then of course purchased our snacks from the front of the store. Challenge complete here. So did overall I complete our challenge? Technically no, because of the $14,500 art. <laughs> Let me know in the comments what your favorite secret store was in this video. And we will see you guys, wait, and we will see you guys in the next video. Say bye YouTube.